So, let's uh, just. So, who are you? Well, my name is uh, Jawad Kaki. I'm a corporate vice president in the Windows Group, yeah. uh, responsible for uh, networking and device technologies. And the last time we met was at an MVP summit uh, three three years ago. Three years ago. That's right. Well, it's and good to see you again. And I was a networking MVP. <laughs> what happened? To <laughs> what happened to me? Look at this. <laughs> so what do you do? What, you run the networking group, which we've interviewed some of the networking group and gotten a, a pretty good look at Windows Vista. Well, yeah, my, my job is to make sure that uh, we have a solid plan and direction for networking. And once we have a solid plan and directions, we actually execute and deliver on the plan. Yeah. And it's all about making. See, networking. Uh, is uh, a vital technology, right, for all of us in this uh, connected economy. In fact, you know, it should be as vital as uh, uh, next to air and water. You know, once you air and water, you get connected. You should be able to order food, and be able to get go to work, and get paid. So the focus here really is making networking very, very simple for everybody to use. Uh, and at the same time, you know, r you know, rising to the challenges that we see of the continued growth of the internet. Yeah. Um, and. But how, how low is the team? Because you're a corporate vice president, right? You're up, <laughs> you're up here. Um, and the team's down below you. It, how many people work for you? Give, give uh, me some sense. Well, I manage a group uh, of 700, several hundred people, close to 700. Wow. Uh, my group uh, does uh, focus on uh, various IP networking technologies, things like the TCP IP stack. Wireless technologies, yeah. IP version six, network security, uh, you know, and variety of remote access, VPN, DHCP, Radius, you know, so all of these things, you know, that get you connected, get you connected on the network and be able to send packets with another computer on the network. Right. In addition to that, the other part of my organization focuses on device technologies. Okay. So things like USB 3094, you know, all the buses that are there, uh, storage, you know, whether it's optical storage or uh, flash storage or hard disk storage. Uh, so you know, those are the kind of things we do. Yeah. Um, uh, now, in addition to developing these technologies, you know, we need to make sure there's a great support for uh, uh, hardware on Windows. Yeah. So my group is also responsible for providing you know, the infrastructure for device drivers, uh, the certification for the device drivers. Uh, you know, in f is those devices that come in after Windows is shipped, right. we also provide the whole infrastructure for people to download those drivers from the website. Yeah. When I uh, met you three years ago, you were very passionate about IPv6. And that still hasn't happened, has it? Well, I mean, IPv6, uh, uh, you know, it is happening. Come on. What do you mean it's not happening? <laughs> it's happening, you know? Well, well it I, hasn't happened yet. I mean, uh, my computer right, still is well, using well, IPv6. You know, I, I think that the way I think about IPv6 is that, look, I mean, you know, um, there's a strong demand for IPv6 in, uh, in uh, different parts of the uh, market, you yeah. know, for Japan was very uh, much ahead. The rest of the world, followed by China, and of recent, you know, two three years ago, the the U.S. government, starting with the DoD, has woken up to the need to scale the internet. Yeah. Right, uh, we have millions, billions of people, uh, and there's not enough addresses. I mean, just imagine, there's uh, fewer addresses assigned to India than uh, MIT. Is that true? That's that's what I'm lead, like to believe. Okay, so and what happens is that you know when you don't really have an IP address, you know obviously we are software engineers and we are kind of creative people. We we'll come up with ways to work around that stuff, right? right? So the modern day equivalent of uh, the MS DOS memory limit is this NAND, right? Yeah. And this breaks the end-to-end -end networking pr paradigm, yeah. which then causes you know support issues or help desk issues. It actually kind of slows down developer creativity. So it's really very important. Yeah, for like us my, to, my house has one IP address, and I have a NAT, and I'm sharing that one IP address with several computers. So t tell me what you could do in my house if I, if each device had an IP address rather than just my NAT had an IP address. Well, you know, address. if you have your NAT, you know, your device is not reachable from outside, right? Unless you you resort to some guesswork in the network, you know, using NAT application level gateways and so forth that runs in the edge devices, right? And right. you know, you have for each application you have to write the gateway code, right? It doesn't scale, right? Because how many, how much code are you going to run into that thing? Um, so IP version six restores the end-to-end -end networking. You know, think of it like restoring the hygiene back into the network. Yeah. That's what IP version six does. Restores the hygiene into the network. Um, 
And you know, you you ask the question whether is it happening or not happening. Well, in in some ways, the way I think about happening is that you know, akin to what happened with Windows ninety five. Windows ninety five having a TCP IP stack was a pretty significant event for the industry, and you know, it was a key to the growth of the internet, right? A key contributor to the growth of the internet. Um, in in Windows Vista, you know, we would have IP version six all built in, right? In fact, it would be the pr preferred protocol. Yeah. And so that's happening. It's happening, <laughs> but it was three years ago where you were really. What are you really passionate about for the next three years? Because obviously you were really passionate about IPv6 three years ago, and now we're starting to see the, the IPv6 stack being built into Vista right. and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, it's, basically, it's all built into Vista, all application in Vista will be IPv6 uh, uh, you know, ready and so forth. So, yeah. you know, I'm very, very satisfied. I mean, look, what's going on is, a, you know, there's a continued innovation going on, right? And uh, uh, we are seeing a proliferation of wireless technologies, right? Wireless technologies uh, are enabling, you know, the always connected experience, yeah. right? And one of the, one of the issues that, that I'm seeing is that this, the proliferation of these different technologies, whether it's wireless wider networks like GS, GPRS or Edge or 3G kind of stuff, UMTS, or is EVDO or WiMAX, Right on the on the on the public on the wireless uh, wide area side, uh, then we also have Wi-Fi, which continues to grow. Right, 11N will be out soon, gives you giving you more than 100 megabits per second wireless. It's pretty cool. Mm. We're seeing like also on the personal area side, ultra wideband technologies. Well, this is a great advancement, but but one of the main challenges is that how do we actually get these disparate technologies and deliver a seamless experience to the user? Yeah. Right, the user doesn't really want to focus on. Um, you know, this technology, that technology. They just want to live their lives or get work done. Yeah. So my focus really is that how do we convert networking so it's so easy to use, you know, as easy as breathing air and drinking water. Yeah. One problem with the Wi-Fi network, because I, I fly a lot, and some airports have free Wi-Fi, like the Las Vegas airport. Free Wi-Fi. It's beautiful. You Can know? you gamble? <laughs> no, because I'm on my laptop. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I gamble. <laughs> But uh, you can gamble and, and be on your computer at the same time. <laughs> um, but other airports, uh, you open up your, your laptop or your tablet PC, and, and uh, there's Wi-Fi there, but you have to sign on. And signing on sometimes is really easy. You know, paying your 7 bucks to get on is really easy, and sometimes it's a real pain. Are you guys, is that something you guys can control, the web services that sign you up for, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think you point out, a, bring up a good point. You know, where Wi-Fi is free, and there's no special sign required, getting on is a breeze. Yeah. But, uh, you know, there is no consistency of experience from hotspot to hotspot on what uh, is the sequence and steps, you know. Some people have um, subscriptions that will get you, but, you know, what happens in roaming? Uh, this is a big problem in the industry that has to be tackled. Uh, you know, we did actually make provide enhancements Windows XP Service Pack 2 to make it easy for uh, hotspot providers to have a consistent way. Yeah. Uh, and that support that we built uh, in hotspot for XP SP2 needs to be further enhanced. Uh, we, and we are focusing on. So, you know, working with uh, companies like T-Mobile or uh, Singular, uh, yeah. Sprint and so forth, I think, you know, is, is an important thing as well as uh, hospitality uh, industry. Um, yeah, that's in a place. What, what do you think about all the uh, new uh, edge networks and uh, you know the cellular phone networks? I think it's great that you know it can always be connected, right? Yeah. There will be a dull moment, right? Yeah. Uh, do you have one of those cards? For you? Uh, I have several cards. I, you know, <laughs> I have EVDO and I have a UMTS card. Uh, you know, I use both of them. Uh, the coverage is getting better. Yeah. Uh, the cost is becoming a little bit more affordable. Yeah. Uh, you know, the issue I'm paying was, about eighty dollars a month for mine. Like, yeah, it's still pretty pricey because there are not that many people who can afford eighty bucks a month. No. Um, I, I guess uh, that that would be the key thing. You know, yeah. and, and and I think that the the biggest focus for me, you ask, is really how do we actually make sure that people can always be connected. You know, always be living a very fulfilled life. You know, it could be working or it could be playing, right? But you're always connected, and wireless enables you to do that. Yeah. Uh, what are you proudest of on your team? Uh, you know, what, what's the technology you're, you know, that you're uh, happiest? I think I think we've made a tons of uh, enhancements across the board. You know, uh, you know, on the networking side, for example, we have a brand new uh, TCP/IP stack in uh, Windows Vista, and this stack is hot. Um, you know, we've done a lot of enhancements on auto tuning of the stack so that you have a high latency, uh, high bandwidth links. You know, we are able to fully utilize the pipe. 
know how the Windows opens up and without really requiring any special manual configuration kind of stuff. Um, also, when you have high latency, low speed bandwidth, you know, again the issue or error, for, uh, you know, error prone networks, so being able to recover from these errors and being able to utilize the pipes, I think it's pretty phenomenal. So the TCP stack that we got will actually scale right from low speed, high latency wireless links to uh, you know. Uh, high-speed multi-gigabit links. You know, we can do offloading to smart cards. We can actually pump packets like you won't believe. So I'm really excited about this stuff. You know, broadband users will be able to take more advantage of the yeah. UTCP stack. Enterprise customers will say, "Wow, now we can actually use the satellite links much more effectively, or we can actually use trans uh, transcontinental links much much more efficiently." So it's a pretty significant enhancement. And you know, this new stack has got all the latest uh, capabilities, you know, IP version 6, we talked about this stuff, yeah. we have IP security, so you can actually have end-to-end -end security. Right now, you know, you can, you can um, um, configure your system so that, you know, either you can do it or the administrator can do it so that whenever you talk to it on the machine, the, the communication will only pl take place if you can mutually authenticate each other. Ah, okay. okay. Uh, so, you know, you can actually manage uh, the kind of traffic coming to your system. Uh, and if you want, you can actually have the traffic always be encrypted. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, significant enhancements in, in firewall side, so that now the firewall is, um, is can be centrally managed by the enterprise man manager, and you know you're much more safer. You know, so you know I'm very proud of the networking enhancements, you know, both in the IP networking stuff, also the wireless side. Yeah. Uh, another issue uh, that was a pretty significant issue for us was uh, on how you keep uh, machines up to date, uh, and those machines that are not up to date and possibly not safe. You know, you keep them off the network. Enterprise customers really wanted uh, us to make sure that uh, uh, only patch machines and the, exactly. And, and the problem is that you know this this uh, perimeter firewall, right, is really doesn't give you a lot of protection uh, when you have all these wireless links yeah. because people can always get behind the perimeter firewall and bring the machines that have been infected after having visited a foreign environment. So a long horn uh, version of Windows. Are you calling Starbucks a foreign environment? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, in, in, any environment not managed by the network manager is a foreign environment. Yeah. So when, when, you, when you actually have a, the, the returning laptop, or maybe perhaps you're working from home, perhaps you're working for Starbucks, right? Yeah. So the administrators can now make sure that you have the latest version of software, okay, that you go to latest virus signatures. And if you have latest virus signatures, you get a bill of health and you are allowed access to the network. If not, you are quarantined until you actually get remediated right, to get latest virus signatures, various virus software and then you are allowed on the network. So these are the capabilities we built in. Pretty significant, you know, it would, it would really make a networking much more safer and much more easy to manage uh, by our, our customers. Interesting. Um, the team I met with, um, God, I'm forgetting their names now, but they said that between here and uh, Silicon Valley, uh, using Windows Vista, they were seeing up to something like a 40 times, well, they said up to 40 times, but they're seeing a pretty significant performance improvement. What, what's the latest you've been seeing? Well, I mean, uh, and what does that mean to us? You know, because it, it it's mean, hard to who's really us? The end user who's going to download think, well, uh, you know, the thing, you know, download you, movies or download music. Okay, look, listen, I mean, what it means to you, okay, if you are a consumer at home, you know, using a cable modem link or a DSL link, you know, means that you you are able to get more throughput out of your the link. Okay, yeah. so you'll be able to download stuff faster. What it means to an enterprise customer like Microsoft is that we can do a lot of backups across sites much more quicker, much more effectively. You know, in some cases, people have remote connectivity through satellite links, and those satellite links now are not always fully utilized, uh, and they're very expensive. So if you have a satellite link not being fully utilized, it's like uh, you know, burning money every day. Well, the new uh, Windows Vista stack, Longhorn stack, would enable people to better utilize the network links. Interesting. One thing I, I really uh, remember about having dinner with you is you're a pretty interesting guy. You, how many languages do you know? Well, I mean, I speak a few languages. How many? <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, no. Well, I speak English, I speak Swahili, I speak uh, uh, several Indian languages. Uh, and, uh, you know, I can get by in Japanese, Mandarin a little bit, you know, uh, to, break, you know to break the ice. <laughs> uh, but, you how, know. how does that help you with your job here at Microsoft? Well, uh, <laughs> well, I think it helps you connect with people. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're definitely moving to a world which is, you know, a flat world, uh, you know, where we relate to any other person on the planet, and and being able to, you know, connect with people at a human level, uh, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Um, behind me here, let me just show it. Um, what, three years, two, two years ago, you won the uh, Walter Cronkite Faith and Freedom Award. 
What, what does that mean? What, what, and why did you win that? Well, you know, uh, as you know, that we are in, uh, you know, pretty challenging times, you know, where there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding across uh, many of the divides. Uh, you know, there could be cultural divides or could be religious divides. Uh, I think after 9-11, you know, here in America, we clearly, you know, were all shaken up as a nation. But that wasn't really a time to, to uh, be just remain shaken up. It was time for us to actually get our creative energies, come together, whether we are Jews, Muslims, Christians, you know, people across faith lines, you know, come together and attend to a common need, right? And really, there were two things that were important. One was to actually, you know, uh, mutual understanding and education. And second really was, um, you know, working to do common uh, projects like putting, building homes. Yeah. So I guess, you know, uh, somebody thought uh, this was worth uh, recognition and, uh, you know, I was, uh, I was recognized uh, by the Interfaith Alliance Foundation. Yeah. We don't talk about religion and, and the role it plays in technology very often, do we? No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, how, how does that guide you as a, as a manager? Well, I think uh, it's all about, uh, you know, uh, it's all about values, okay? And, you know, all, all major faiths of the world, uh, all great civilizations, you know, uh, hold the, the universal values dear. You know, and, and it's all about making sure that, uh, um, you know, there are core u things like, you know, freedom and justice and all so forth, right? I mean, that we all share, compassion for your fellow mankind. And I think, you know, as we share these collective universal values, and we know there's more that unites us than that divides us, I think is key. Yeah. To, to a kid in college, or in college or in high school right now, networking sounds, I don't know, a little boring, because it's sort of like plumbing, isn't it? What would you say to that somebody said that? Well, I mean, why would I work in networking? In networking, man, that's, uh, you, know, uh, you know, I'll tell you what why. What are the challenges? What, I, I'll tell you what why. It, 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 okay, you know, I think that if you look at the progress that's been made by civilizations, is whatever infrastructure got built. So if you really want to contribute to human civilization, you really need, need to get people connected. Okay, so building networking technologies and getting people from all over the world connected so they can participate in this in an online uh, existence, I think, is great. It's great to actually improving cultural understanding. You know, I remember, I remember, it was uh, 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 in Beijing uh, in uh, 2003 or so. You know, I was uh, speaking at the Beijing University of Post Telecommunications, and the guy was asking me, saying, "What does your company or your country think about this conflict or versus that conflict?" Right? And I said, "Look, I mean, I'm not really qualified to speak as a politician, but I can tell you, as an engineer, you know, if you get people of the world connected, you know, they'll work the issues out." Okay, so uh, being able to create technologies that bring people together, right, uh, to their informations, to their loved ones, to their businesses, I think is a great kind of uh, contribution to make. Yeah. So, and you know, there's a lot of exciting thing. I mean, you, can you imagine that you know you can pump a lot of data through like wireless links, you know, secure reliably. You can transform how entertainment is done. You can really change how people stay productive. Uh, you know, I think this is a is a re, uh, you know is a once in a lifetime opportunity that we have. Yeah. Uh, you know. People get kicks out of flying people you know, from place A to place B, as we know, you know, companies like Boeing, Airbus does, right? I think networking is a great way to help, uh, you know, uh, people realize their potential um, and be able to share with each other and not have distance be a barrier. Yeah. What's uh, the most exciting thing you think is going to come out in the next couple of years? Vista, baby. <laughs> I think Windows Vista uh, is going to be a generation ad generational advance in terms of software infrastructure yeah. uh, for the masses. Um, I'm very proud of the work we have done across the board in Windows, uh, whether it's really in the communications capabilities or the you know manageability of the product or the security of the product, the the, the usability of the product. You know, we say Vista is all about clarity, about confidence, and about connectedness. Uh, I think this is a pretty phenomenal event. I'm really looking forward uh, to the next few months here, uh, us uh, wrapping up uh, Vistas and, and, and bringing it out to the marketplace. Yeah. Well, thanks for uh, spending a little bit of time with us today. All right. Well, thank you. It's great to talk to you. Thanks. <laughs> cool. <laughs>